The most strenuous of all forms of swimming is water polo. Let us watch this game. To the outsider, this may appear at first glance a series of wild throws and splashes, but it need not be as wild as this. There is, however, a lot of science in the game. In order to appreciate this, let us examine some throws, tackles, etc., isolated from the match. In this method of picking up the ball, it is simply lifted from underneath. Here's another way, turning the ball over and so bringing the hand underneath. In this method, the ball is held between the forearm and the hand. Catching and returning the ball without letting it touch the water is a time-saving way if harassed by an opponent. Look at the leg action during a throw. A vigorous kick brings the body half out of the water. A similar vigorous kick enables the goalkeeper to cover his goal. Now the tackle. The ball is snatched from the opponent without interfering with his swimming. Watch again and see how the tackler gives him his feet. This shows that the snatch takes place when the ball is not actually in contact with your opponent. Here's a tackle during a match. Here's another form of tackle. Pushing your opponent underwater is legitimate if he has possession of the ball. Taking the ball underwater when tackled gives a free throw to the attacker. Here's a foul by the tackler. His opponent did not have possession of the ball. Watch again a legitimate tackle. It is often advisable to dribble the ball right through instead of passing. This is done by knocking the ball from one arm to the other while swimming. In water polo, there are seven players on each side. At the commencement of the game, they line up along their own end and the ball is thrown by the referee into the middle of the pool. The distribution of the players is as follows. Three forwards, one half back, Two backs and one goalkeeper. At the start of the game, the centre forwards of both teams race for possession of the ball. The successful one passes to one of the members of his team playing in a back position. The ball is held by that player until about to be tackled by an opposing forward. 
By that time, the successful centre forward has taken up a position in front of his opponent's goal. And the back who has possession passes the ball to him, making an endeavour to place it accurately and at great speed in a position suitable for his colleague to tip it into the goal by means of an uplifted leg. Centre forwards race for ball. Pass to back. Held until attacked by opposing forward. Pass to forward and tipped into the goal. Again the centre forwards race for possession. And the successful player passes to the half back. When an opposing forward has arrived, the man in possession passes to the right back. who holds the ball and ultimately throws clear and the forward most favourably placed swims across and fires in a shot termed a back flip. Race for the ball, pass to half back, pass to back, Thrown clear, forward swims across, and back flip. Here the polo team swims up at the commencement of the game. And the centre forward passes to a back near to his own goal, in order to gain time while he makes for a position near his opponent's goal. The back in possession swims forward, dribbling with the ball and passes to a colleague, who in turn passes on to another member of the team who deflects the ball into the net. Centre forward passes to a back, who dribbles forward and passes to a colleague who passes again and the ball is deflected into goal. 